Hi, my name is Claire Halpin. I am an artist and facilitator. You're very welcome back to the Highlands Gallery for our online workshops. This week we are diving deep into some watery watercolours. First, we will begin by having a close look at some watercolour paintings in the Drogheda Municipal Art Collection. And then we will be experimenting with using very watery paint in different ways on different paper and card. Be letting it drip and flow and splash. So let's take a quiet moment to have a look at this painting. What do you see? What is going on? Watercolour paint, as the word suggests, means that the paint is used with a lot of water. So you get thin washes of colour. These allow light through the paint to reflect the white sheet of paper. So the lightest area are nearly where there's no paint, if you know what I mean. So here with this painting, if you look down in the front area where there's kind of what is suggestion of grass, the tips of the grass are white. So it's like the artist has no paint there and that allows us to get these light highlights and then when it comes to painting the rocks the artist has used a kind of pattern of brush strokes so she has begun with the kind of purpley color which is then reflected in little abstract kind of little brush stroke shapes through the middle area of the landscape and then the purple is then continually echoed out to the background and onto the horizon line and you can just see where the artist has made much more watery kind of blurry brush strokes to suggest that there is more mountains there and then she has put a little hint of that purple in the sky so for me watercolors they're a very delicate medium it's very uh, very hard not to overdo them you have to go gently gently and this artist, I think, has just with a few colours and just with a lightness of touch, has created this beautiful light. To me, it possibly looks like a morning light on this Connemara landscape. Here is another watercolour from the Municipal Collection. This is by Richard Caulfield Orphan. He has taken a different approach to the watercolour by starting with the toned or coloured paper. So where we looked at the previous one and the white was the background and all the highlights were in white. By selecting a toned coloured paper, it's like, it's like the artist already has created an atmosphere. So here he has built up this landscape, just once again using a few colours, but using thin washes. If you just look down at the landscape part, so the lower section, and you can see how with very thin layers right the way back to the horizon there is just with a few brush strokes he suggests this headland and then suggests these um seashore and then maybe building it up with washes with slightly heavier or more use of paint in the water to uh, for the rock parts so it gives them more kind of bit, they look a bit more solid and they also kind of give some definite shapes in the landscape. And once again, as similar to the last artist, he fades out the colours towards the horizon. So by these thin washes, but they're still there. Those washes are still there so you can still see where the landscape is. And then he puts on this beautiful billowing cloud. And it's like feathery and it's like he's nearly rubbed the paint into right into the paper to give it that soft fluffy edge and it's billowing it's moving because you can see there's traces of it there to the left side kind of going down towards the uh, landscape and maybe a hint of light there on the headland on the left hand side so as I mentioned about watercolors it's very easy to overdo them this artist he only just put the one cloud, he just needed one cloud for this painting. 
And it is this one cloud in this painting that for me is the sign of a highly skilled watercolour artist at work. He doesn't put in any more or any less than is needed. And through this minimal use of paint and watercolour, he creates this calm atmosphere across this beautiful seaside landscape. Here is another watercolour. It is by the artist Nano Reed. For me, this is a different style of watercolour. Although similar to the last ones we looked at, where she uses toned paper and also uses a limited number of colours, with just those kind of bluey greens and that dominating black. For me, this watercolour painting is more like a sketch or a drawing or maybe like a preparation for a more finished painting, maybe an oil on canvas painting. So the artist has used these kind of different range of brush strokes more to capture this busy scene. It's a bathers in the Dodder River. And these different brush strokes, so you'll notice that they're on what looks to be maybe like the bridge. She's used one big long brush stroke, just one brush stroke, to show the top of the bridge. And then use these kind of wibbly wobbly up and down brush strokes um, to show the kind of railings on the bridge. And then use these kind of short brush strokes to show the people. And also those, just with a couple of brush strokes there up on the top right, there's a suggestion of a church or, yeah, some sort of a church building. And then for the water area, she uses the paint like watercolour, really watery paint to show water, to show the flow of the water. And then that more calm area just towards the middle ground. So we're going to experiment today with different ways of using watercolour. We'll be reflecting back on some of these paintings that we've just talked about. So if you have all your materials together, let's get painting. Okay, so if you've got your materials together, um, we'll get started. So, um, we're going to start with some watercolour paper, which you may not have. But still, just to explain um, what watercolour paper is. Um, here it is. Okay, looks like any other sheet of paper. But um, it's quite thick. Here, there. And it actually has bumps on it. So when you put the paint on, it's like mountains and valleys. The paint will run into where the valleys are. Because that's the thing about watercolours. They're natural because they use a lot of water. As in, when I say natural, they do what they want to do. They flow like water. They work with gravity. So they want to flow across your sheet. So anyway, I'm going to start with this. Um, and as regards colours, just two or three colours. Uh, and as I said, you don't have to use watercolour paints. Um, these are actually just, um, post, uh, some of these are just poster paints. And as regards the brushes, uh, the softest brushes you have basically is ideal, but we can make do with whatever at this stage. Uh, we can make do with whatever brushes. Okay, so we have our water at the ready. It's a little bit like giving an invisible or magic workshop because I'm working with water, which is clear on a white sheet. And I just realized that my brush is actually got a clear handle as well. So anyway, so first things first, we're just going to put brush in clear water. Okay, and then what I want to do is whatever is more quite quickly for this part, and then what you want to do is. Um, once again, first, uh, you want to get like some, uh, or if you use personal palette, just put some water in and keep dipping. And then I'm going to use a round brush for this bit. Um, and as I said, just to get used to our experimenting. 
um, with the water flowers and take the tiniest drop, teeny tiny drop of dirt onto the top of my brush. Okay. Now you should be able to see that there. I have some level here. Okay, there's no way not you be able to see this on here. So um I'm just gonna so now it is a bit darker as you can see. We're just allowing the green to flow and give it a bigger hand. So that's the other thing is you don't need big sheets, just small sheets, and you just turn it up. I'm just going to want one color and as I said, you're not trying to paint anything in particular. I'm just trying to see what happens when you just drop the paint into the water. I'm going to just go over different brushes and I'm trying to think a bit like you can add a cut, you can add more water, and then it's a bit like I like driving a car, move it around. So I'm just experimenting, letting the paint flow, letting it do what it wants to do, which is move. As I mentioned earlier, you know, watercolours is very delicate. So, you say delicate, like with this one, as I said, the lightness is the white of the sheet. It's very easy to overdo, as in, put on too much. It can be quite hard to come back, as in, if you overdo it, it can be quite hard to work back in. Although, that said, I did mention about our um, kitchen roll and I suggested kitchen roll rather than toilet roll because uh, kitchen roll is a bit heavier and it doesn't disintegrate if you're going to take the paint off so what you can do if you kind of feel oh I've kind of done too much or it's gone too dark in that place you can if you wash your brush off completely and then dry it off completely you can actually okay you should be able to see this you can actually take the paint off and you can add more water this is why watercolor paper because it's thicker it means that when you put all the water on it it doesn't just crumple up or it doesn't just uh, buckle as in to just kind of go here the other thing you can of course use your use the kitchen roll directly so you can scrunch it up and see this area here, I'm going to try it. So you'll see that you start getting different effects as you use it. And then, so as I said, it's an experiment. You're just trying out different ways that the water works with the paint and also works with, uh, with the paper. Okay, so for the next one, um, sorry, I should have mentioned I'm going to give just a couple of different experiments that you can do, and then you can just mix them all up, try them all together. So uh, I had mentioned that if you didn't have watercolor paper in a highly unlikely event, um, at this stage of lockdown, that you might have some cards. So this is an Easter egg box. So. Uh, Gonna start with once again. It's good to use it's kind of some thicker, uh, paper or card so that when you add all the water, that it doesn't all kind of go bumpy and crumple up. Now, um, while this doesn't have the bumps that the watercolor paper has, it does have. You see here where the edge was ripped, so that might be nice to work with as well. So I said, don't worry if this kind of ripped up the edges. Okay, so this time, um. 
I'm going to try working with two colours. I know, knock ourselves out, introduce a second colour. Okay, and what I'm going to do is see how, what happens when colours mix together. So, the other thing about water colour, what a colour is, because you're working with clean water, you can already see that water is kind of a blue, but anyway. Uh, so, let me see again. Invisible magic workshop. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just quickly looking at the water. And this time. Um, once again, I'm going to, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce one colour to the other. So I'm going to start with, um, hopefully you can see me in there. Okay, so all it is is in clear water. I'm going to start with open it up so that you can see the change of the So as I said, this property needs to move downwards. Okay, so before I go any further with blue, uh, actually interesting with that card, the water is drying in really quickly. Well, it's quite actually we're in the middle of May, well nearly the end of May. So actually they'll dry out quite quickly as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna go back over there really quickly with just with the water. So I don't know if you can see where there's a rip kind of where the edge of the box was, but I think that might be nice to work with. Let's see what I mean in a minute. Okay, so second colour I'm gonna go with is some red. So you'll notice the water is already in colour, so I'm anticipating that when these two colours come together, we might get some. So, actually what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn it back up the other way. And actually, the, what happens there with the card, um, it bleeds, not as in an injury, but like a, a word that you use when referring to how kind of liquids move, it bleeds out. So it's like it's going into the fibre of the cardboard and it's spreading. So, Introduce the blue back the other one. Okay, so hopefully you can see that blue. As I said, it, the watercolours will have different effects or different ways of moving on different surfaces. Um, so you can see that, like, so there's some very pale areas there, which, as I said, is where the light is hitting the card and coming back. So usually with watercolors, you work in thin washes. You don't take big globs of paint. Um, you work in thin washes and you build them up. Um, and the other thing is that, as I said, you usually work quite small with watercolors. And um, the other, which I have mentioned as well, where I, you're using a white background allowing the light to come through, it's quite unusual that white is as a colour is actually used in watercolours because usually the white is the light of the background coming through. But like the two examples we looked at, um, the uh, orphan piece where you had the white cloud, I thought we might have a little experiment with that. Okay, so. 
It's not that it's illegal to use white and water colours. You don't have to worry that the water colour police will come in around to you. But just interesting to try it out. So this sheet of card. And as I said, it, sometimes it can be interesting to work with from a coloured background because it's not quite as daunting as looking at a white sheet and going, oh, what am I going to do? So, um, I'm going to... Let's see. As I said, I'm using a mixture of uh, whatever paints I had at this stage. And what's great about watercolours is it is very little paint. So only play with a tiny amount. Um, so similar in a similar way to um Richard Orpen. I think now I'm gonna have to put this down to start on this. So I think I might actually just for crack, I might just work with white and maybe a little bit of blue. See how this works on uh on the brown paper. Now, obviously, I'm working quite quickly for demonstration purposes, but uh, as I said, use different shapes, shaped brushes as well. Um, and the other thing is, you can always let it dry and come back to it. Um, sometimes the like the watercolor won't dry exactly how they um, how they look when you know when you're working on them. Okay, so I'm not going to put water over the whole thing. So, that that way. so hopefully you should be able to see that. It's kind of gone for, okay, so following the Richard Orpen model, it's kind of gone for a cloudy kind of shape and then just some streaky stripes. And um, as I said, for your experiments, you don't, it doesn't have to look like anything. You're just experimenting with the technique. Okay, so, and um, Again, uh, don't use the paint straight from the tube or from the tub. I would mix it with some water just so it flows better on the water. Okay, so. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, Just using white, something quite small. So I was starting to look. It's starting to look like maybe I can make choppy C maybe. And if I always love a watercolor with the with the simplest of gestures or the simplest of brush strokes. Just using very few materials. Um, I'll put up images of these just at the end of the workshop so you can have a closer look um, just at the different, uh, how, they, how they turned out. But I love with watercolour how, as I said, just with the simplest gestures you can create movement and light like we saw with the artworks we looked at earlier. So, um, oh yeah, I was going to go, um, I might try just... Um, we're going to say just add in a little bit of the bear in mind I am doing this back to front and to camera so bear with me just for demonstration
these uh, so these let the colours kind of flow into one another. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, which I mentioned, is uh, to kind of I don't have an opportunity to do so yet, but to change your water and uh, have some kitchen oil to hand. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back and have a look at this cloud shape, which you said is kind of strange and slightly. Okay, I'm going to work on it this way and I'm going to change brushes to maybe um, a round brush. Um, okay, so as I said, same thing, don't use the paint thick or fine tube, just a minute. So. Like where we were looking at with the Sylvia Cook Ellis the transparency or the translucency of watercolors. Looking like a blouse. Ink as well, you know, it's a lot bad a lot at the moment, but with the lockdown and the limited amount of outside time and the amount of distance. Really starting to notice the world around us more, which is fantastic. And I think as well, noticing any changes in nature around us, even changing up the light as we go into the sun. Yeah. Um, looking a little bit symmetrical, but just to give you an idea. And it actually looks like it might actually, you can see that there, hopefully you can. I think it looks like it's a pretty good job. I'm just going to add some water there. I'm going to dampen the day, but... I'm going to just run out to fall out. So, as I said, I'll put up um, some images of these just at the end, um, so you can see them better than me just holding them up in front of you here. Okay, so, um, okay, for our next one, um, I thought we'd kind of combine a few of those things, and I'm going to go back to working on the white. Um, so, um, here. Um, I mentioned earlier about working small, and uh, you notice uh, actually if you looking at the image that we looked at, most of them were only kind of that that size. And um, a couple of reasons around that, as I said, sometimes with bigger sheets that if you use a lot of water on them, they kind of get kind of crinkly. Um, Sometimes artists they actually put water on them and stretch them and leave them, you know, overnight before they work on them. But another reason why watercolors uh, artists work quite small is sometimes they're working outdoors and particularly obviously depending on the country you're in. But um, it's handier obviously, and sometimes you might see I don't know whether you've ever seen these that there's like small little watercolor packs that are like that size. So an artist could be, you know literally have everything in their pocket. Um, okay, so just for this last one, um, I'm going to just kind of combine a few of those different things and just look a little bit closer at just kind of the uh, that idea of building up in layers and watches. So I'm kind of going to go for it now. Very, very simple landscape. So, um, so it doesn't have to be a landscape, it could just be shapes, patterns, like and what we've looked at in some of the other workshops. Okay, so um, just with this one, just to show around mixing the colours, 
Um, sometimes the colours that you get directly from the tube, they don't maybe look that natural, like the blue is a bit too zingy, the yellow is a bit too lemony, and the red is maybe a little bit too scarlety or maybe too pinky. So colour wise, we said, and similar to what we were looking at with the other artist, a very limited palette. Uh, then the red blue, yeah. But I'm going to mix a little bit of brown in with the blue and it'll just take, well, hopefully, it'll give you just some more kind of natural colour. So, anyway. So, you can see by mixing a little bit of the brown in with the blue, it made it just a bit more like a grey blue. And then you can increase the density of the colour by adding more and just kind of some more. And this is already starting to look once again like a sea landscape. You can see where I'm drawing to the <laughs> everything I do seems to be of the canal or of the sea at the moment. Uh, okay, and um, so then that's the other thing. You can use the same colour in the sky, but just use less paint. So I put in a really quick wash. Using the same colour that you mixed up, maybe a little bit more blue into it and then you can use the same colour there and a the movement there and if you feel it's gone a little bit too too much and take it off so there's just a hint or a wash of it uh, so it's just taking that whiteness off the sheet um, so then uh, remember with the Richard Caulfield Orphan one, we looked at how he had made um, the rock. So first he had painted like a you know, like a brownie red colour, so we might try a little bit of that. So I'm going to go with some red, a little bit of brown just to take the, uh, take the ready off it. So it just makes it, as I said, a bit more of a kind of a natural this is a fair in mind, <laughs> it's upside down, back to front, and with the recovering arm. So, so when we looked at the Richard Orpen, you noticed that the uh, he put the rocks on, it looked like he let it dry and then put the rocks on. Now, we're just going to go for the rocks now, but you, get, you kind of get the idea, I'm going to just a little bit more. And and that's the thing, it's with watercolors, it's pretty easy to kind of suggest you kind know, of texture or suggest some different features. Um, okay, so then suppose I want to add in, yeah, so I'm going to add in a kind of a rock kind of headland maybe in this area here at the front. So with this, I'm going to go with, so. You'll notice even in nature, you rarely see like a pure black. So similar to not using pure white in watercolors, you rarely use pure black. So for the black, I'm going to mix some blue, some brown, and some red. Pretty much all the colors together. And then you can do, so say if I want to do a rock, so it might be a bit more angular. So you might use your straight brush. Okay, 
it's okay in general that you know. but as I said you can leave it to dry and come back to it and because like the colors probably dry more paler than when you're working with them so Okay, um, I'm just going to put some of the wax over there. Okay, um, so, not bad, as I said, I am working on upside down back to front and with a recovering broken arm. So, uh, but it was just to give you an idea of having looked at some of the other artists how they used watercolors and just using some of those techniques but also looking at the colors and looking at how the colors kind of flow together and even working on different surfaces so between the watercolor paper the easter egg box and just some brown carrot they come out quite differently so have a go try it out as i said at this stage of the day we probably all have very little paint left so watercolors are the perfect medium to try out and with the beautiful summer light out at the moment perfect opportunity to do them outdoors and maybe even let them dry outdoors so enjoy experimenting with the watery watercolors and we look forward to seeing your paintings you can email them to us at info at highlines.ie and we will be creating an online gallery of artworks created during these online workshops.